Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and our ongoing study in Plotinus. And uh, I've got to say that right here, we're going to be taking a look at pages uh, 90 to 105. Critical, critical lesson. This is uh, Plotinus teaching on the three realities. Now later, this will be taken up by Christianity as the Trinity. So think of this teaching as the bridge to the doctrine of the Trinity. Remember, this is 263 to 270 AD, third century, very early third century. And uh, he entitles this chapter, The Three Hypostases. So that's where we get hypostatic union. And uh, it is the, the bridge. It is uh, the bridge to the uh, later doctrine of the Trinity by the church. And remember, Plotinus was in Egypt, Alexandria, and he was also in Rome. He influenced East and he influenced West, both. And... Uh, so very important lesson. Let's take a look. He does it in reverse order. He does the uh, third hypostasis, the second hypostasis, and then the first. Let's go to block one, the third hypostasis, the world soul, or as he words it, the soul of the world. And he again, he calls this the three primal hypostases. They do also exist in the human soul. And... Uh, they are made manifest to the human soul as tones that come from above. So he keeps that very mystical, tones that come from above. Human souls tend to forget the divinity. And they also lack true self-knowledge because of this. Humanity suffers from the lack of self-knowledge. The self wrongly desires to be independent and then becomes forgetful of the Creator upon which, upon who we should be dependent. Humanity is guilty of forgetfulness of the divine. It leads to excessive valuation of the sensate existence. That is true today. The soul needs to be led back to the world above, to the ex supreme existent one. Back to the supreme existent one. And the supreme existent reminds the soul of its true nature. We must first examine our own true nature. So first up is self-examination. The divine soul has breathed life into all things. And it guides the movement of all creation, giving creation form, yet at the same time remaining transcendent. At the same time remaining transcendent. The world soul gives form but remains transcendent. It exists eternally. Our soul must contemplate the world soul or the soul of the world. And this is Plotinus's first mention of this in very concrete terms. So like I said, this is an important lesson. The soul of the world provides us luminous insight and uh, draws us into the state of theosis unification with the divine. Luminous theosis. The world soul envelops the entire creation, but never divides or leaves its place in the transcendent intelligence. In other words, Plotinus combines Plato and Aristotle both because he has to, uh, he is positing a transcendence that is above the world and in the world. And so he combines the world of forms as above the world and in the world. The power of the world soul draws us into theosis unification because it is the image of the intelligence above. Image of the intelligence above. And it is the image of the word. It is the energy activity of producing. Remember, we discussed that 
earlier, but remember the intelligence is the potentiality of the forms and the world soul is the actuality, actualization of the forms. But that is, this is in block one, this is the third hypostasis. Remember you go from a incomprehensible one that emanates the existent one and then the intelligence and then the world soul. So block one gave us the world soul. Now block two we're going to take a look at the noose mind or the intelligence. Plotinus calls the second hypostasis the intelligence. Noose intelligence. The world soul is joined to the noose intelligence above it, and both issue from the divine one above them both, because they all emanate out of the exi I mean, because of emanation out of the existent one. Emanation. All things move toward a goal. The existent one produces the second hypostasis without movement. In other words, it's an emanation. The second hypostasis is nous mind or intelligence. That which is eternally perfect is eternally productive. The world soul is the word and deed of the intelligence. It is the actualization of the potentiality in the intelligence. Word and deed. The world soul is the image of the intelligence and the divine one is above them both. Therefore, the totality of beings are in the noose mind as potentiality. Noose mind intelligence begets all beings and contains all ideas. Out of its fullness, it begets the world soul. Now here you go. Comparing this to Plato, the three degrees of reality. Remember, he calls this the three primal hypostases. Well, his three primal hypostases come from the three degrees of reality from Plato. The good is the one. The demiurge is the intelligence. The mixing bowl is the soul. They all make up the three hypostases for Plato. So, Plotinus takes the good and calls it the existent one. He takes the demiurge and he calls it the noose mind. He takes the mixing bowl and he calls it the world soul. But, three hypostases, triune, primal hypostases. So block one, I mean block one gave us the third hypostases or the world soul. Block two gave us the second hypostasis of the noose intelligence. Block three, we look at the first hypostasis, the existent one. The incomprehensible one must move on to the existent one. It must. Okay, let's go to uh, three. Flux and return to the one. The one is primary and separate. All bodies are in a state of flux and return to the one. And all of the existent realities are coordinated by a single triune system. The single triune system is all directed toward the one supreme existent. And the intelligible realms make up the real behind the surface sensate realm. The real. Sense objects are guided by their intelligible movers. And behind the triune being, there exists the incomprehensible one, out of which emanates the following. Being as the existent one, intelligence as the noose mind, soul as the world soul. There you go. There are the three primal hypostases, being, intelligence, and soul. For, for Plotinus, the three primal hypostases are being, intelligence, and soul. Existent one, noose mind, world soul. The emanation of being, these emanations also reside in us. They are present subject, subjectively and objectively in the realm of positing, which he calls the man within. 
The man within communes with the one. We are enveloped by the world soul, and our soul dwells at the top of our body. And the intelligence above is always active, always communicating with our soul through sensation and through thought. Extremely, extremely important lesson. Extremely important that we understand that Plotinus is the bridge in the West and in the East to the Christian integration of Christian doctrine with Greek philosophy. And we saw that in our study of Dionysius. We very much saw that with our study of Dionysius. But now we can see in this lesson that Plotinus taught of three primal hypostases, and he got it from the three degrees of reality from Plato. So he went from three degrees of reality to the three primal hypostases of being, intelligence, and soul. That's going to wrap up pages 90 to 105, and now we have a very good understanding of why as early as 270 A.D., God is making sure that the doctrine of the Trinity does emerge because this is not simply Plotinus. This is the Holy Spirit making God's kingdom and God's doctrine known and moving forward. So yes, he was a secular philosopher, Plotinus, but he was used by our Lord and he was a bridge to the later development of the Trinity. We'll pick up next time on page 106.